What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, DC has a lot going on these days, Brian. Uh, James Gunn's Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters, part of Gods and Monsters, has sort of begun a soft boot. We're getting a lot more information about characters, Brian, casts. Uh, and so James Gunn obviously is always on Twitter talking about certain things and he, although this, this wasn't an article, this, this came from an article, but James Gunn was talking about superhero fatigue and something, Brian, that we've been talking about for quite some time. And he said, Brian, if I remember correctly, there is certainly fatigue, but it's not about the superhero. Right, I agree with that, Brian. What are what, what do you get from what he's saying? He's 100% right. So let, let's give you the quote. It's from Rolling Stone. Okay. And James Gunn flat out says, quote, I think there is such a thing as superhero fatigue. I think it doesn't have anything to do with superheroes. It has to do with the kind of stories that get to be told. And if you lose your eye on the ball, which is character. We love Superman, we love Batman, we love Iron Man because they're these incredible characters that we have in our hearts. And if it becomes just a bunch of nonsense on screen, it gets really boring. Brian, he, Brian, he talking big truth. He, he truth, talking, no, he's talking truth, but he's talking, listen, he's talking truth, but his stuff is coming out. Yeah. Brian, he, he, we got to feel what he's talking about. Is what I'm saying. He's talking. Oh the, yeah. You know what I'm saying. So oh, this dude is calling his shot. Oh, like, oh yeah. No tomorrow. Oh yeah. He has to. He has to. Um. But it's not so different. Like again, we've made this ref. I've made this ref reference before. And we've spoken about it. About the westerns. It was a whole bunch. They still do westerns today. And the only difference between these westerns that they do nowadays and before is that some of these are actually like real they're not as frequent and they do every once in a while give you the unforgivings the tombstones and a, a bunch of other films superhero is now superhero films the superhero genre is now is like we getting three four a year five who knows and and then yeah. we got tv series cartoons it's all, they're all over the place right and so the fatigue is certainly there some of the same sort of storylines come up they they remind you of this the the originality and uniqueness of this has sort of disappeared and so sort of yeah, yeah. Black, Black Adam is offended. You said sort of. You said it completely. <laughs> Black Adam is an atrocity that deserves his own. But 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 reason why we keep bringing it up because Black Adam is the caricature of what we're talking about here. That is a movie literally that is a mashup of other Everything. superhero movies with no other purpose than to recycle the hits. Like, I, I refuse to believe anything else about the way that movie is edited and put together. It is so constructed to be that. that it, that's why, to me, as this genre yeah. is fading right now, I think that movie will be a fulcrum film because people will look at it and say, this is literally the film that kind of... It, it, it's almost like... It's almost like in the NBA, everyone complains about teams tanking. Yeah. But it's like when someone comes out and says, yo, we are tanking. Look at us. We're tanking like the Dallas Mavericks did the other day. That's when people pay attention. And yeah. I feel like Black Adam's a film that's like, yeah, everyone was kind of copycatting each other. And then Black Adam was like, yo, look yeah. at us. We are trying to copycat everybody. Yeah. And it failed. Miserably. Miserably. Because the story stunk. It was horrendous. It was horrendous. But Brian, Creature Commandos, he's hired, um, he's, he's, he's casted the, 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 the actors for, that are going to be voicing a the animation and are going to be playing in the movies. Let's see how that works out, Brian, because I still don't have any 
uh, confidence in how that's going to work or, 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 or look good. I don't know. Uh, but Frank Grillo is one of those guys. Brian, what are your thoughts on Frank Grillo switching from Marvel to DC? And it, this is just going from worse to worse. Well, I didn't really. So, I yeah, I'm having a tough time getting fired up for Creature Commandos. I think it's one of those shows that will have to it'll have to gain steam once it gets here. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, well, I thought about this because they, they're putting this effectively in the quasi leadoff spot. I know Superman Legacy is the leadoff film, technically, but this will come out before that. But the thing that I was reading was James Gunn was kind of saying like he wrote all of it. He's not directing all the episodes, but he wrote all of them. Of course. But it occurred to me that you know what this show really needed, I think, to get people get people buzzing was it needed a big name showrunner. I think if I was gun, I would have tried like I would have tried. I mean, not that you would never get Tony Gilroy, but I'm saying if you could get somebody who had that kind of a name, that would add legitimacy to these seemingly fringe characters. Because otherwise, I, right as it stands now, I think the problem I'm having with it is it's like isn't this another offshoot of the suicide squad isn't that what we're really doing here because gun is the architect of all of it and if that's the case why is that so exciting we already have the suicide squad which didn't really work and we had peacemaker which some people like it's like you're already kind of doing a little bit of saturation risk when we talk about fatigue yeah. with these types of motifs and characters so i'm still not that excited frank grillo Listen, I like Frank Grillo. He's a nice, he's a great character actor. Yes. And we'll get to his comments about Marvel in a second. Mm -hmm. But like it's also weird. Like he's playing Rick Flag Sr., which yeah. means he's Joel Kinnaman's father. Yeah. That's basically what this is. Mm -hmm. Like how does how does that work? I don't know. That that doesn't really hook me. I don't know. I'm sorry. Perhaps Suicide Squad is some else world stuff, but that's that that can't be the case too, because he's doing water. So I don't know, Brian. I don't know how other uh, how, how some of this works. Perhaps Creature Commando takes place in a specific era, Brian. That's what I, that's what I'm thinking. But, that. but Viola Davis is in this as Amanda Waller. So how can the era be that different? I, I don't. I don't know, Brian. I don't know. Viola Davis has got to be getting a little frustrated. <laughs> Yeah. Right? She's getting that paper. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> She's getting that paper. I mean, she is, but I mean, I you know, I just I just watched Air, and she's she's phenomenal as Dolores Jordan. The uh, movie's great, by the way. Um, yeah. But like, for a character as cool and as involved as Amanda Waller is in the DC comics, like the times that she's gotten to be Amanda Waller, it's like. You couldn't draw a worse hand yeah, so far. Yeah, mm. like, you really couldn't. <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe this will be good. I shouldn't say that, but I'm just saying, like on the surface, like we're waiting for the big moment where she's kind of behind Project Cadmus and Batman's dropping it. We haven't seen any of the classic Amanda Waller. We've no, seen like fringe man. Amanda Waller. Yeah, she's just there as a Nick Fury type, almost just popping yeah, up and. She is. And, and it just doesn't doesn't work for me anyway. Um, but what did Frank Gillow say about Marvel? Um, <laughs> and now heading over to DC. Well, I thought this was interesting because the headline, which he apparently wanted, was the headline that got captured was Frank Grillo switches from Marvel. <laughs> like this felt like this felt like in the '90s, like the wrestlers going from like WWF to WCW. <laughs> That's what it felt like to me when this article came out. And then he just basically torched Marvel yeah. and the usage of their character on the way out, which he basically was like he played Crossbones, obviously. Um, and he just refers to an effing short amount of time <laughs> that the character got to be on screen. The mythology of the MCU and just what Marvel has in its characters is so deep. Crossbones was there for a minute. He was supposed to be there longer, and then they went the direction they did. I think it serves a purpose, but I think the interesting thing is you see how many people have responded to Crossbones. And again, he's on screen for a very bleeping short amount of time. I think there's more meat on the bone. I'm disappointed. That's why I went over to DC. Like, <laughs> declares he's never coming back. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that was funny. That was funny. That is some WW WCW type stuff. Um, it's like, come on, man. It, Crossbones for me doesn't even work too much without Cap being there. Cap, Steve Rogers, uh, or sorry, Chris Evans would have stayed there for a little bit longer. I don't know, maybe, but nobody's really missing it. I'm sure that I, I was disappointed in how quickly they got rid of Crossbones myself, sure. right? I think I they would have had a, they had an opportunity to go um, with Frank Grillo's character in a series, um, go, you know, going through that that transformation. That would have been interesting, but we never got it, and and it's over. And I guess in another time, perhaps if they decide to use that character again, but uh, not anytime soon. Yeah, I, I agree. And like, I gotta be honest. It's like, yes, was he in his short while very good as both Rumlow and as Crossbones? Yes, sure. But to me, you know, let's not let's not go full Sony here <laughs> and think that we need the Crossbones trilogy. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. is a supporting character by definition. Could they have done more with him? Of course they could have. I'm sure they shot more scenes. Like if we're being truth, I'm sure part of his bitterness is that there probably were some good scenes either in civil war or even in winter soldier mm -hmm. that didn't make yeah, yeah. the final cut. Yeah. And that's unfortunate, yeah. but you know, I, I don't know that necessarily the Marvel Marvel's made many mistakes and we've been calling them to task for that. I'm not sure that the editing of crossroads <laughs> makes the, uh, makes the, the top list. 100 yeah, yeah, at this yeah, yeah. point. So, and lastly, Brian, um, Superman reported in his 20s and casting director hired. Who's the casting director, Brian? So it's someone who definitely has um, some cachet. It's also someone who's worked with James Gunn before. Um, normally, we don't like pay as much attention to to this type of stuff, but because it's Superman, everyone's kind of hanging on on uh, on every word. So it's John Papsadera. Uh, is is who's doing who's doing the casting now he worked with gun on the suicide squad so they they obviously have a little bit of professional connection there um but also to his credits most notably i think people would say he's also been a very close uh compadre of christopher nolan so he cast among other things the dark knight okay. Inception, okay. memento interstellar uh, also did uh jurassic world uh, Venom and it's the casting director for Oppenheimer, which means he called everyone in Hollywood and said, we got five minutes for you. <laughs> he has literally everyone in it. But anyway, so this is a heavyweight. Yeah. This is a guy who matters. This is a guy who's done some things. So it obviously underscores they're taking this very seriously. And as you said, the latest rumor, we had heard younger Superman and now we're kind of here in early to mid twenties is the target for Clark Kent. Jacob Lordy, 25. Still fit. I, I, Still fit. I, I, I know. I mean, who, how many people can you get that age range that is not going to look like they're 17 or 18 years old? I don't know. Um, it, it just goes to my point, though, of like, I think the pressure is really on gun because, again, the number of actors between age 22 and 25 who are already like their own proven commodity. How long is that list? Like Timothy Chalamet, and that's it. And he's not playing Superman, but you know, like you get my point. So you're gonna have a young, younger, up and coming actor who the director James Gunn is going to have to extract performance yeah. out of for yeah. this to work. Yeah. I mean, I like the concept, but it is gonna be a big bet and star making, you know, opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the DC universe and where it's at with Superman. Um, Frank Gillum moving over to the DC universe. Um, I mean, let's see what happens there. Not, there's not a lot to be excited about for Creature Commandos, in my opinion. But let's see. Let's see. Um, By the way, sort of related but unrelated, I continue to push this narrative of David Zasloff wanting to do traditional adaptations oh, yeah. because as we're waiting and I you might have seen recently so now we're getting Harry Potter the series written and produced by JK Rowling on HBO Max we're getting new Lord of the Rings movies with Peter Jackson running the show 
these are throwbacks, man. I'm just telling you that that all is feeding to me into like he's going for it, a Superman that isn't a copycat of Christopher Reeve, but that evokes that time in terms of the movie. I, that's what it feels like he would want based upon his other decisions. Yes, 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 yes. Superman will be the poster boy of the American dream. Um, he will provide hope um, and all the things uh, and nostalgia probably, Brian. Um, and the message I think will be um, and what we've gotten so far is that that kindness that, that people seem to believe that doesn't exist anymore and he's going to perhaps bring that back. That's the hope. I watched um, I watched Superman the movie the other day again just for I went back and watched it just for fun just to kind of revisit it and yeah. you know by today's standards it drags it's long yeah. there's definitely parts of it that are long but there's no question that the I don't know it's just that the little touches that Donner and Reeve put on that character like I was just watching that scene where he like saves the cat out of the tree to mm -hmm. the little girl mm -hmm. and he's kind of being interested it's like it's that type of thing that they've lost, you know, in Superman, that little conversation that he has with her when he flies, he's like, bye now. And he flies off in the middle of other yeah. things that he's got to take care of, you know? Yeah. And, and Reeve and Donner were the master of like not neglecting that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was watching Superman too, just today. And I was like, yeah, these front, these effects aren't doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's those other things that work when it's just Superman and Lois and and and, and some some th aspects. I guess the character of Superman uh, does well in this, but the effects and all that other stuff, the fighting sequences aren't aren't that great. But the movie still stands uh, at the test of time as being one of those best uh, Superman films, Superman one and two. But yeah, let's see if they can get back to that. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the DC universe as it is right now and where, you know, what you think about James Gunn and his thoughts about superhero fatigue. Um, is it the stories or is it the superheroes? Creature Commanders, are you excited? I'm not, but let's see. Um, what, what sort of, are we going to get uh, not a replay of what they did with Christopher Reeve um, Brandon Routh and now whoever this new guy is going to be right hopefully it's not a replay of that um, and do you care about Frank Grillo moving over to the DC universe I don't but let's see what he can bring to be like yo Frank Grillo was dope let's see um, let us know in the comment section below we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report you blew it <laughs>